Hello and welcome to this uh, video blog. Uh, this is um, the video blog about Senator William Sprague, Books, Whiskey, Taxes, and American Industry in the Postbellum Era. My name is Erwin Escobar and I look forward to sharing this research with you. So uh, let's get started. Um, William Sprague was a senator of the United States, but before, but before that was actually a governor. He was the governor for the state of Rhode Island. During his years as governor of the state of Rhode Island, he fought in the Civil War, and he was only 31 years old and was therefore known as the boy governor. Um, Later on, after serving as governor of Rhode Island and fighting in the Civil War, he was elected to the Senate in 1863, where he served until 1875, only two years after the 1873 crisis, where most of his businesses actually fell apart and um, um, forcing him to give up many of his properties, uh, face multiple lawsuits and so forth as a result of the 1873 crisis. Now, as a senator, he stood in favor of American industries such as printers and whiskey distilleries. Now, Sprague was anti-taxes and pro-industry. We see this, for example, uh, from primary source evidence. On February 18, 1866, Harper's Weekly quoted Senator William Sprague from Rhode Island in an editorial published against the book tax of 1864. The senator said that a tax on books means taxing out of existence interest which made us a prosperous people. Cheap literature is a vital necessity of our progress and welfare, said the governor. Uh, the senator at that point, whatever therefore increases the prices of books and so diminishes the chances of their universal diffusion encourages popular ignorance. And obviously that is not a good, that is not a good thing. Senator William Sprague defended the interests of independent entrepreneurs during the post-bellum era. He stood in uh, favor of industry, low taxes, free enterprise, and he was actually, and as we're going to see now, uh, a, a very successful entrepreneur himself until, until the crisis of 1873. Now, Sprague, as I said, was anti-taxes and pro-industry. On March 30th, 1869, in a speech in the Senate of the United States, Sprague once again defended the interests of American entrepreneurs. This time was the distillers of whiskey. He argued that the laws of Congress were such that, that the distillers of whiskey could barely survive after paying the levies put upon them by the government. He argued that these forces, le uh, that these forced levies were an example of arbitrary power that could be compared to the most corrupt days of the Roman Empire. Some very harsh words there uh, from the senator. Now, Sprague was a post-bellum entrepreneur. Uh, his life as a politician and entrepreneur is an example of the ups and downs of the post-bellum economy. Benefiting from the Industrial Revolution, particularly in Rhode Island, where the rapid growth of the textile industry paved the way for rapid industrialization, However, he was ravaged by the 1873 crisis, so he benefited uh, from events and during the postbellum economy, but he was also, also uh, uh, deeply impacted and, and, and lost uh, the majority of his businesses after 1873. Uh, um, as a Postbellum entrepreneur uh, Prague uh, inherited Sprague inherited uh, A and W Sprague, a printing mill in Cranston, from his father and uncle early in his life. By 1873, the company had 10,000 imperatives, 280,000 spindles, and 28 printing machines. In 1873, Sprague controlled much of the state's business and political scene. He was part of owner of Perkins Sheet Iron Company, Rhode Island Horseshoe Company, Sprague Mowing Machine Company, Cornstock Stove Fundry, and American Horse Nail Company. In addition, he controlled three national and two savings banks. So he was deep into business. Uh, this is the research that was um, 
done uh, from uh, some uh, articles and uh, primary sources. Uh, this is the research that was done to complete this assignment. Um, also, it is important to know that um, by the end of the of 1873, um, Sprague had uh, no involvement in politics. Um, he had his business had gone uh, down under. He had he was in deep financial uh, uh, trouble. Later on in his life, he runs to be uh, to to get involved in politics once again, but he fails and he uh, remarries and moves on with his life. So his life, an example of ups and downs of the postbellum economy uh, in terms of benefiting from great rapid industrialization and also heavily impacted by the difficulties, challenges of the crisis of 1873. Thank you, and I look forward to sharing more thoughts with you in this video blog. Bye-bye.